Hi, this is the finished product. Carry on watching to see how I achieve this look from an old hutch and buffet and all the items inside. I show you how I paint them, stamp them, wet distress them and all the tips and tricks of how to do this and make this and create your own. Enjoy the video. As I say, I'm showing you from the complete beginning of how I made this hutch. This is Julie from Rustic Cottage Co. Please give the thumbs up. Say in the comments your favorite parts and if you have any questions, please put them in the comments and I'll answer back. I hope you like this and enjoy the video of how I created this piece. Keep watching. Hi everyone, this is Julie from Rustic Cottage Co. And this is the piece that I'm gonna be starting on today and doing this week. This is the top of a uh, hutch and behind there is the bottom that I've already put the charcoal gray around the edges and the details and also put the clear coat on top so I can get going on painting on the white over the next couple of days and finishing it up, making it look amazing. And not only am I gonna be painting this hutch, finishing this piece of furniture, and showing you how great it's going to look when it's finished but also I am going to be painting and creating and decorating all the pieces that I'm going to display in here. I've already started so I'm just give you a quick look up here. Some of the pieces that are going to go in so I've started on these and they need a couple more coats of white and uh, a few more pieces are going to go in here so let's look forward to see what I find to display. I'm hoping that I can display everything that I have already and do not need to go out but uh, to be honest I have not been to a thrift store yet this year can you believe it and I'm so itching to go but also since the new move I've been kind of making myself use what I already have rather than click get more stuff. So I, while I did a move I boxed up all the items that I hadn't painted over the last year or two and now I'm painting them all up and using what I have rather than getting more until I kind of run out. So that's my challenge over the last couple of weeks and especially for this hutch and that's what I'm going to be doing. So stay tuned to see what's going to happen to all these pieces. Well, as you can see, we are at that ugly stage that always gets me excited as I can start to see how things are going to look when it's finished. I have the vision at this stage. I don't know if everyone has that vision when they kind of go through things. I get a vision when I see a um, piece and when I'm this stage of the piece, I start to realize how good or well, how good the vision is going to turn out, or if I'm not so sure about how good the piece is going to turn out with my vision, I may change it at this time. But this one definitely is going to look great the way I am visualizing, visualizing um, how it's going to be uh, finished. And I'm excited because it is coming to life in my mind how I'm going to do this. And uh, I hope you're going to like it as much as I am. So as I say, first coat of white, always the ugly stage. And uh, then uh, just let that dry in this afternoon, I will put on the second coat. It usually takes two and a half coats. Um, this piece has got a little bit of bleed through and I always deal with that after um, because when you're wet distressed, I wet distress back to show the dark gray and the, the dark gray will not show the bleed through. So I always uh, wet distress back on any areas that are heavily bleed through. In any areas that I don't want to wet distress back where the bleed through is, that's when I put the primer on and uh, then put a couple of coats of primer on and then uh, go back over it with my top coat. So uh, this one's going to need that kind of handling because I can see some, um, especially on the sides, there's going to be some uh, bleed through and uh, that's going to take a couple of extra coats. But that's okay, I'm used to that and can deal with that. I hope you're liking so far. As I say, I know it's the ugly stage, but don't worry, it's gonna to come to life soon. So now I have got two coats of 
white chalk paint and I have to go back in and touch up for the touch ups of the third coat which is a little bit and there are a couple of bleed through areas so I'm going to put some more primer on those two coats of primer and then the top coat again on top of those areas now the one thing you can't see here so I'm going to kind of go in closer and show you I need to get one of my small brushes and just go into some of these grooves so I'm going to do that today too but I'm going to try and find the best here's the best area look at this natural cracking I have not had this with chalk paint just on top of wood before and it's just got a natural cracking going on in some areas, not all areas, but a lot of the areas. And I'm gonna go with that. I'm gonna get my crackling IOD stamp and do some areas. I'm gonna wet distress back. I was only going to wet distress a little bit, but now it's starting to crackle in some areas. I'm actually just gonna really go with it and have some fun with this piece. So today I am going to be touching up a third coat, as you can see here, it definitely needs a touching up. And I'm going to see how much crackling is going on and uh, get it all finished. And I want to go in with a small brush, as I say, into the details. Um, I didn't know if I wanted to keep some of it the darker colour, but I, I actually don't. I want it all white. So I'm going to go in with a small brush into those areas and just touch those up too. And then I also have to get a piece of chicken wire and I want to put it just, just in this middle section here. So I'm going to do that today too. So that's what we're going to get on with. Once I've done that, I will show you what I've got up to. And I'm doing a little bit of the wet distressing and a little bit of the ILD um, crackle stuff. I will show you how I do it as I go along. So that's the next step. Stay tuned. Now we're at the wet distressing time, so I'm just going to show you as I go along a little bit, bring you in closer to see the wet distressing. Hopefully you can see how I do it. I am started over here and I'm just going to continue here. So with this, I'm going to try and show you close up. It's, this is a face cloth. Um, it's a thick one. It's a coarse one. If you've got any old towels or tea towels, hand towels or face cloths that you find that are a little scratchy, itchy, thick or you don't like them, they're actually the perfect thing for doing wet distress. And what I do is I wet it down with hot water, not too hot, hot enough that your hands can touch but not uh, too hot. I like the hot water because it's better on my hands when I'm doing this and then I squeeze it out and then all I do is just rub along in random areas, not, I hit and miss different areas as you can see. And then here I'm just going to go, and on this particular piece I'm just rubbing details and especially in areas that it's cracking. You know, if I want to go with that and make it look distressed where it's crackling, you know, the crackles coming through. So just going along the edges and where you've got the edges, the lines, that's what's wet distressing back. And as you can see from the cloth, the white is coming off. So once you get it covered, the whole cloth in white and the, the um, cloth has gone a bit cold, go back, wash it out under warm water and then do it again and keep going until you've gone over every crease that you can find and that you want to distress. I've shown this many times, um, but I find a lot of people still always ask me, how do you wet distress? What is wet distress? And it's as simple as that. Um, there's other paints like the DIY paint you, you only need like a, um, a baby wipe and it comes off. It, it's so easy, it's like butter, it comes off, it works really well. But this particular paint that I use, the brand that I use, it uh, takes a little bit more elbow grease, takes, I like using the hot water just because it's easier on my hands than having my hands in cold water all the time. And 
yeah, it seems to work out good for me. And that brand of paint that I do use is just an easy brand of paint to get for me. So that's why I do that. And I'm just going to carry on going over this whole hot chum buffet and wet distress all the areas I want to. And then I'm going to go back in with the uh, touch-ups of paint and also the IOD crackle um, stamp. I might touch up with that. So we'll see how the crackling's going, see what's happening with it, and uh, we'll make some decisions as we go along. Sometimes I don't know until I'm ready to do it. And that's one of the things of being a creative person, you're creating as you go along. So there you go for the wet distressing, and that's what I'm going to be doing for the next probably half hour, 45 minutes, because this is a big piece. Stay tuned for my touch-ups and then I'll go over what I'm going to do. I'm going to wax this big piece and because it has done some bleeding through and because it's such a big piece and I want it to be white, um, I'm going to be using a white wax and that actually helps if you have any slight, not yellowing through, but you know it's kind of the, the white has gone warmer in places than other places. If you put on white wax, it then just whitens the whole thing. If you use a clear wax, um, it will not whiten it as you go along. But you can add some white paint to the clear wax and make it white wax. You can do that too if you don't have any white wax. I'm not going to use a poly acrylic clear coat on this because that will totally bring back out any of the bleed through and I don't want it to look like bleeding through. I want it to look rustic, white and crackled. So that's what I'm going to be doing for the next, I would say, as I say, 45 minutes, half an hour for the uh, wet distressing and then we'll get on to see what we're going to do with the crackling. So I'm going to be using these jars and um, I'm going to have to probably, I didn't want to have to paint the lid, but unfortunately the lid does kind of say what the jar was. So I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to see that or not, but I will eventually paint the lid. But I wanted to keep it black. I have two of these. I have the other lid somewhere. Um, I kept these. I always keep empty jars from jams, sauces, all kinds of things. And these especially I keep because I like the shape of them. Also the little kind of... Um, jars that have the instant coffee and those can be quite interesting too but these I keep. I, uh, I'm going to put on is the IOD stamps, the crockery stamps, I'm not quite sure which ones yet, I don't know if you can see that but these are the IOD stamps. I keep them in a big Ziploc bag, I keep the backings on them and I cut them out with the backings on and uh, I want to be able to go round the sides, so the big ones, I don't mind having a big one, I'm just not sure which one I want. So that one I think is going to fit in nicely, so that might be one, and maybe one with a different shape. That one's not bad, I think that looks quite nice too, so that's a possibility, but just to give you some ideas, a couple of these, you don't have to have them fit perfectly. This is rustic. Don't like that one, but this one may be. Oh, it could look nice too. So I'm not sure if this one or this one. I think I'm going to go with this one actually. Kind of liking that. So I'm just going to move these out the way. And I'm using the IOD ink. I already have it in my pad. And I'm using the stone grey. So I want to find the side that I like best. It's always a side on the paint that's always your favourite. And because these are not, they have the kind of lines, uh, they actually don't roll on me, so that's good. So I'm just going to put this here. I'm going to put the bag underneath just so I don't get any ink on the countertop because these are permanent. All right, so just use the pad. Get the ink on the pad and then I'll move that out of the way and then just bring this down to here 
make sure you got it up the right way and then place it in the middle best you can as I say don't make it perfect on purpose because then if it's not perfect it looks like you meant to do it that way and everything I do is rustic so I'm okay with that push down all the front and the middle first make sure you get it all because once you go onto the edges you don't want to go back to this part or else if you push down again it may be in a different place and then you've got two images and you don't want that so just push down on the edge making sure you get all the detail let it come up push down on this edge make sure you get all the detail and as I say don't let it go back or else you'll get two images and there you've got looks like a little old crockery so I'm just going to do this one too where did I put oh here it is I'm going to use the bag so I don't get any ink on the actual countertop here put the lid back on because you don't want it to dry out and I'll move that out the way now I'm going to try and get this in the middle as I say I'm going to do the middle first, push down, get all the details, and then do the edges. You only want to do the edges once, once it's down and then back up, you don't want to put it down again. So, or else you'll get a, a double imprint, because it's ne it never goes back where it used to, where it was before the first time. bring it up and there you go so I do have a lid for this one now let's put it onto our hutch the hutch is finished come and have a look so the hutch is finished it's ready I'm just gonna put the two last items on these are the jars we just did put them in place here I just sanded them just slightly so they've got a rustic look and uh, now I'm just going to show you the whole thing if I can. So we have the bottom there and then the whole thing. So I'm going to bring you in closer so you can see some of the items that I have put on here. Here is the first layer. I've got that big beautiful jug there in the middle. And then just to bring in a little spring, I brought in the rabbit picture that I did have in the bedroom, but because most of the bedroom stuff actually sold, I kind of brought it into here and give this a little bit of texture and a little spring. And also with the little birdies and the nest, uh, that adds to the spring. There's the candles I made. I made a few of those out of the chair legs, if you remember. And uh, so there's the first little shelf. I added chicken wire to the middle and there is the top shelves. So I'm going to try here to see if I can get the whole thing in. I'm not sure if I can. Let's see if I can get big enough, far enough away to try and get the whole thing in, but I'm not sure. We're getting there slowly here. Can you see it all? There's the whole thing. I'm going to be doing some staged pictures soon but there's the finished hutch the whole thing i hope you enjoyed the transformation from beginning to end of the hutch we painted up some of the items the jars the jugs the candlesticks and the pictures added some stamps and uh, i hope you enjoyed thanks for watching please give thumbs up Tell all your friends and subscribe. This is Julie from Rustic Cottage Co. Thanks for watching. Hi, this is Julie from Rustic Cottage Co. Here is the hutch. Would you like to see how I made this? How I transformed a hutch that I picked up and all the items inside I painted and created. Carry on watching to see from Stage one of the piece 
and all the transformations, tips and tricks. I hope you enjoy my video. This is Julie from Rustic Cottage Co. Please like, subscribe, thumbs up and let me know. I hope you enjoy. Keep watching to see how I created this masterpiece. Thank you. I'm Julie from Rustic Cottage Co. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please like and uh, thumbs up. Thank you.